you know, let me uh, bring in Sean Foy. Sean, good to see you again, sir. We were just together in Mon uh, Monday there in Atlanta. But we want to talk about uh, what's been going on. You've been slacking off. You haven't been working enough. In fact, just to help you out, I'm going to show a 90-second recap of what you've been doing. Watch. <laughs> That was Let Us Worship D.C. That's just Washington, D.C. Uh, Sean, uh, this talk about Kingdom to the Capitol, the, all what you've been doing. Give us a, we're going to, we got some B-roll to play, but explain, you went to all 50 states, explain how that came about to those that don't remember and what happened. Give us some stories of what happened along the way. Yeah, well, first of all, go Dodgers, World Series champions. My buddy Blake Trinan, a strong Christian who loves Jesus, loves America, pitched the last few innings last night. I'm so proud of him and the whole team. A lot of believers on that team. Um, but, yeah, you know, uh, we've done 50 U.S. capitals. It's absolutely insane um, uh, to, to, to think of what God has done over the last two years. Um, I don't know if this has ever been done in the way that we did it. Uh, the revival, the prayer, the worship, the communion. Uh, the altar calls, uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people across America gathering at all these different events. And then, of course, we ended it last Saturday in Washington, D.C. on the National Mall. Uh, before that, we did a, a massive Jesus march with, uh, you know, tens of thousands of Christians through the streets of the city. And, you know, we have been leaving it all out on the field. Come on. I mean, I don't know anybody traveled more than I have, that's worshipped as many times, that's gone to as many capitals. I believe that we win the war in the heavenlies in the place of prayer. And so after we've done all this, it's time to stand and it's time to vote. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really hoping that we're going to see a shift in this election. And I think a lot of it's going to be due to those that gathered in all these capital cities and pressed in for a move of God in their nation. Yeah, amen. And you're right. Five days. We got five days until the election. Uh, and by the way, I, I too, fan of Blake Trinan. Uh, he is a avid Flashpoint watcher. So yes, he will be back. He'll be on Flashpoint. And I left my Dodger hat at home. Otherwise, I'd have worn it tonight too. I was thinking about that last night, watching them win. What a comeback! Uh, but Dutch, when you when you see this, you're, you're I mean. It was first off. It was an ambitious goal to all fifty st state, all fifty capitals, you know. And I'm thinking, you know, some of these. I don't want to offend anybody, but it's a little harder to get to Bismarck than it is to get to Atlanta, you know. There's there. It was just a a huge amount of details to handle. So that's one aspect of it. But being as one that you've been in these prayer movements, uh, you know, for a, a lot of years. What does it do when you go to the Capitol and you drive a stake in the ground and you worship God and you, and you do that all across the nation? What does that do? Well, I think it, 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 it makes a statement in the spirit. I, I think, you know, what, what we're doing when we do these types of gatherings and go there is we're saying, you know, we are touching the ground every place where our foot treads, which is 
which is also a warfare term in Hebrew. Every place your foot treads, I'll give it to you. Sometimes, you know, you can do it in your prayer closet, but there are other times where God says you need to go. And as one who has done something similar, you know, I've been to all 50 states to pray. Uh, most of them many times. Chuck and I did the tour several years ago. Ours was more of a forerunning time. It was more of a uh, plow the ground right. time. And the fact that God is saying that now go worship to me takes it to another level. First, you got to break up the fallow ground. You got to tear some things down. But when you begin to worship, now you're raising the throne. You're building a place from which he can rule. That's what he says. He inhabits those praises. So we're saying, Lord, now we've, we've done some plowing. Now we want you to come and set up your throne, your presence. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? It's the presence movement. It so is. this is encouraging to me what Sean is doing because it's God saying next level. You're driving out the enemy, but now I'm coming in to, to inhabit the territory myself. Nothing like it. It's the rebuilding of the tabernacle of David. It's a yeah. presence movement. This, to me, is a prophetic statement of it what's is. coming. That's good. It is a presence moving movement. It is the tabernacle of David. And so, you know, it's, it's an awesome thing, and I'm, I'm proud of him and others who are doing it. And I know, again, what it costs. It's hard to do it. It is. It is hard to do. Um, I, I haven't done it, but I know what it costs to do one. And it's, it's a big deal. Sean, when you uh, you see this, when you think back on all 50 states, which one stands out to you? You know, uh, and thanks so much for that, Dutch. You're such a hero and a legend. We're, we're so grateful for all of your pioneering, you and the fathers of the faith. Um, yeah, to be honest with you, the, the blue states, guys, the blue states is where it's at, man. Uh, the bluer the state, the more resistant to the gospel, the more breakthrough we experience. I mean, I, I think back to Olympia, Washington and Salem, Oregon. And, you know, uh, I, I think back to, um, uh, you know, even Sacramento, California and, and some of these places that are so resistant. And yet it's just like. It's almost like you can hear all of heaven being like, we've been waiting to join the worship at this space, at this capital. And, and we're, we're, we're helping Christians reformat their theology to recognize that the enemy gets zero real estate in the United States of America. He gets no state. He gets no state capital. He gets zero real estate. And this is a season where the church is no longer going to abdicate our authority. Yes. We're no longer going to abdicate our callings and our worship yes. to just flee to places in the red states and the places where they're, they're nice governments. But no, I find God in the gnarly places, man. Like, I'll tell you, after going to all 50 and fighting for permits and, and going through all the issues and the logistics, I mean, this is the, the biggest nightmare logistical thing I've ever experienced in ministry, most warfare ever experienced in ministry. However, when we went into those hostile environments, God showed up and met us in a powerful way. And, you know, I believe that is a real sign and a wonder that there is no place too hard and no place too dark and no place too blue. The presence of God can infect and change any environment, no matter where he is. We just got to welcome him in. Uh, it's good. I, I think that should be on a T-shirt. Find God in the gnarly places. Uh, <laughs> it, it's, uh, let me let me get you to weigh in here, Jenny Donnelly. Uh, you hear what uh, you, you guys have been attacking this from different angles, but you've been uh, you've been doing the nation here. I want to get what you think about all of this. How does this all fit together with Million Women? Oh, for sure. So. We went to Let Us Worship way back, I think when they started, and we were just so thankful for Sean and the people that came around him to forerun courage, right? In the face of all this, you know, fake law that got thrown in our face. Right. And being from Oregon, this, this is what we had to have demonstrated. We needed to see people demonstrate great courage in the face of, you know, submitting to authorities and taking that uh, scripture out of context and all that. And so we we joined in as soon as we saw where Let Us Worship was going to be. We went down to the waterfront in Portland. And so when Sean is talking about, you know, the blue states and how fiery and breakthrough, that's all I know, because the only Let Us Worship 
events I went to were all these blue states. So that's all I, I mean, that's all I've ever experienced is just this radical explosion of faith and breakthrough and uh, healing and is it, just amazing. And my daughter actually got to go with him for worship to in the Northwest. And so it was just a joy. And I loved Salem, Oregon, watching that because and, and again, I don't need to, I don't want to sound like, you know, woe is me here in Portland, Oregon, but um, it is so encouraging to have believers come together who are not settling for some uh, passive religious experience. Okay. This powerless, yeah, I'm a Christian, but you know, I have nothing to say. I have no courage inside of me. And so when people come together in Salem, Oregon, and you're looking around at a couple thousand people and you're like, okay, we're not alone. The ones that are fiery, that are not willing to give up, are not willing to surrender our courage. We're, we kind of found each other, you know? And so it's, it's um, incredible, actually, what Sean has done through Let Us Worship, and I'm, I'm super grateful for it. And it gave us a picture of what we wanted to do in the different capitals when we went to the different capitals all on one day. And so, Sean, I can't thank you enough, honestly, for just laying it out there, saying yes before you have the money, saying yes before you have the people, saying yes before you have the permits. You have never have that stuff before you say yes, right? It's the yes that... Um, opens up the faith for it. So anyway, just praising God for you, man. Yeah, it's great. And all right, so I noticed, everybody notices, Sean, you're quite pleased with yourself. You swapped out hats. Uh, but I want to know, <laughs> I did. did you, 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 you signed that hat yourself, right? You signed that yourself. That <laughs> You think I could come up with a signature? He is so intentional with his signature. I mean, it's, this, yeah. this is the one and only guy. Yeah, I hear you did it yourself. I know you did. Uh, all right. So listen, all three of you guys, you know, we didn't, I would love to tell you we were so phenomenally and we got great producing staff, but here's the thing to have all three of you guys and Lou, he's not here at the moment on at the same time, as we go in the last five days before this election, uh, is is so encouraging to all of us. All of us that are that have been going, wow! Look what God did. How He plowed the ground. And I never really thought of it that way, Dutch. How you plow you and 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 and, and those with you have plowed the ground in these states. And then then Sean comes back in, uh, you know, later with the worship that brings it to the next place and a million women and all that that did. What's next is what I, I'm thinking. Like, what are we going to see in 2025? You got any ideas, Dutch, of what God's doing with you guys in 25? Well, I think, well, uh, you know, take me by surprise a little bit with that question, but, you know, I, I feel like the revival begins, Gene. Oh, yeah. I, I feel like there's a twofold, two pronged thing God's about to do. He's going to marry Mark 16 and Matthew 28. Yes. These guys doing what they're doing is, is a part of, it's like paving a highway. First, you break up the fallow ground, you come in with the bulldozers. Then God has a path, John the Baptist, he can run on. I, I see these, what's so encouraging to me is these, you know, I'm an old man now. These, these younger folks are coming up and they're, they're paving the road for, for, for Jesus. He's coming in with the signs and the wonders and the glory of the Lord, Isaiah said, would be seen. And we're going to see this revival and that's going to allow us to rebuild things. And I want to read one verse quickly because Please. I think this is a verse for now. No neutrality. This was sent to me a day or two ago by a person I really trust. And, the, and it's Matthew 1230, where Jesus said, if you're not for me, you're against me. The message says, this is war and there's no neutral ground. There is no neutral ground. If you're not on my side, you're the enemy. If you're not helping, you're making things worse. And I just want to say to people, there is no neutral ground. Amen. And I don't care where it is. If God can take Nineveh, he can take Oregon. He can That's take right. the dark places. I love what Sean said. I love what Jenny said. Those places aren't too hard for, for God. That's We've right. got to get out of the box of unbelief and say, God can do this. And he's going to do it. And 25 to me, we start moving into the new. Amen. All right. I, wow. Get out of the box in 25. All right, uh, Jenny, I want to get from you, uh, you know, as you look into now, and we're not going to hold you to this, but I, I just want to know what's God speaking to you about this next year? What's next? I mean, we're going to get past this election in five days, but what's after that? 
Yeah, so God's been speaking to me about some pretty specific things that are actually very exciting. And one of the things that he's been sharing with me is, hey, Jenny, 2025 is a May Day for the family. It's a May Day for the kids. And because Trump's not going to go to my school board and fight for these terrible books to be off the shelf, he's not going to go, you know, talk to my principal of my kids and make sure that everything's going well in the curriculum. As I said before earlier in the show, we're not going to have a king rule over us. We're going to be ruled by the king in our hearts that says, hey, you're going to need to get out there. And one of the things that the Lord spoke to me was about what happened in Peru with Don't Mess With Our Kids. You know, we just said copy paste. Peru has had such success. When they came up with this movement, Don't Mess With Our Kids, they were able to ice the oust the prime minister, oust the education minister, and George Soros pulled out all of his funding. They now classify transgenderism as mental illness. They define life at conception. And they were a mess in 2016. They were worse off the United States, but the people found their voice and they went forward. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to copy paste from Peru. And what they did is they went into the streets and they started rallying the people together to say don't mess with their kids so we're going to be going in the month of may because it's a may day usa situation you can find this on hervoicemovement.com but we're going to go to new york city miami houston seattle and los angeles and we're going to gather people and impart great courage pray for people see people get saved and there's a a whole lot of other people involved than just us but um, we're excited about what god will do in the hearts of the american people in the church Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, keep us, keep us up to date on that. All right, Sean, you know, you're my last one. Uh, uh, what, what's new for you in 2025? What are you seeing past this election? Well, two things real quick. Number one, the word I'm getting for 2025 is revive in 2025. And I'm really feeling this Isaiah 61 mandate to rebuild the ruined cities, restore places long devastated. I believe that's a big part of this election, but I believe it's a big part of our calling and mandate as believers. As I said, right. running into blue cities, destroyed cities. I live in California and I'm here because God called us to rebuild. So. You want to join us? We're going to be going all across America. We're going to be doing Let Us Worship in Jerusalem. We got a lot of fun stuff planned. You can text REVIVE to 20221. Again, REVIVE to 20221. But here's the most important thing. We have five days left until this thing happens. And right now, the trending and the polling is showing that Christians are a low turnout. And so, listen, we got to drop the self-righteousness God's in control. He's going to, no, 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 no. He's waiting for you to do something. Faith without works is dead. Drop the self-righteousness, rally a crew, go to the polls, vote your values, vote the Bible, and then do a worship service. We're going to be in in, in, uh, in Arizona this Sunday. Me, Mark Driscoll, Charlie Kirk, Perry Lake, we're going to get everyone together. We're going to rally Christians to pray and then go vote. Then we're going to do it again Monday night at my church here in Orange County, OSHA's church. Rally people to pray and worship and then go vote. We need to get people activated not just watching a show, because this right. show is awesome, by the way, but getting them activated to do the works of the kingdom. So lots at stake. We want to revive in 2025, but we got five days left to flip this thing. And we need you guys to go out and vote and be a voice for our nation. Amen. Amen. And so uh, there's another to do is go text all your friends and your neighbors, uh, get them involved, make sure they went and voted and listen. Don't sit there like Sean says and sit back and wait for somebody else to do your part. We have seen what happened. Now, I, I, the, the, one of the greatest indictments in the church to me was between 2016 and 2020. We enjoyed, we reaped all of the, all of the, we got our harvest of great things that President Trump did and we moved the embassy to Jerusalem. I mean, these were great things, but then we didn't do anything with it. We didn't push. We could have done more. Pastors could have preached harder while that Johnson Amendment was pulled back. Now that it's, you know, in there, everybody's a little bit more concerned. Listen, we have got to go in. I love these, my guests today, because they're bold, they're strong, and they're saying, let's go do it. It's time to do it. Everything that we've been looking for is leading up to this day. Amen. All right, go do it. Go vote. All right, let's do a quick round the horn here to wrap up. Dutch, I'll let you go first. Well, I mentioned that earlier. This is Reformation Day, October 31, when the right. day in history when Luther nailed his thesis on the door. And a part of that Reformation is the priesthood of all believers. We all have to engage 
We all have to get busy. This is not for just those in the pulpit. It's not just for the Shans and the Jeans and the Jennies. Let's get going. Let's vote. Let's change things. Amen. Jenny Donnelly, you got a minute? Yes. So it's already been said, but it's worth reiterating is we must vote. It is spiritually irresponsible to not vote. But also we have to think about the influence that God has given us. I don't think that God is asking me to influence more people than he's actually given me. Maybe you have an influence of three people, maybe 30 people, maybe 300 people, maybe 3000. How many ever people you can influence between now and election day? Use your influence responsibly. Use your voice. Amen. Boy, that's good, strong stuff. Okay, before you give me your wrap up, Sean, I got to tell you, you know, in the 70s, when I had long hair, my hair went straight out. You know, if mine would have gone straight down, it would have been, I would have been cool, but it went straight out. Anyway, it has nothing to do with anything spiritual, uh, just other than I think about you with your long, blonde, curly hair and think, why did my hair never do that? Anyway, uh, go ahead, Sean, give me your wrap up here. Latter glory is greater than the former, you know. Um, oh, oh <laughs> there it is. <laughs> every, everybody, just what everyone else said. And listen, if you need a soundtrack to, to, to listen to, to pray through over this weekend as you go and vote, go to our YouTube and you can watch the whole DC film. Film We're releasing it tomorrow morning. It's incredible. Sean Foyt, YouTube. And, and let's just let's just worship our way in and through this election. Let's just Amen. believe God He's on the throne. We out the ground. We've gone to the capitals. We've done events all over. They've gathered in D.C. Mon- multiple times. Now it is time to see God do what only he can do. And so go watch the soundtrack. Listen to the worship and let's Great vote. Enough. Let's rally. Our- Tell every Christian, you know, to get off their butt. Go to the polls and let's see a shift in our nation. Amen. All right. Special thanks to Lou Engel, of course, Dutch Sheets, Jenny Donnelly, Sean Foyt, Bo Heyman, and congratulations to the LA Dodgers, Blake Trinan. I'm calling you. You need to come be on Flashpoint and talk to your people. Thank you so much for watching and being a part of Flashpoint every week. Listen, you got to keep voting. Well, I mean, vote once, do it legally, but stay engaged. There, there's the right thing to do. Stay engaged as we see America turn back. You know, we've been talking about it. Dutch has been saying it. America shall be saved. It's being saved. It's Reformation Day. We're seeing revival in 25. We'll see you next time.